Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about The Machinery from Our Machinery. Now this is a very unique game engine that is currently in development. The last time we took a look at this one was back in the end of October 2020, and that's because it finally entered open beta. So if you want to go and check this guy out, it is available for everybody to download. And there's a reason why we are covering it today, and that is there is a new release that is going to make at least, I don't know, three or four of you happy, because The Machinery is now available on Linux, at least in preview format. So first, a bit of a showdown of the machinery. So let's start with a hands-on demonstration. This, you can see here, is the machinery. Now, at, this, at the most part, it's not the most exciting editor you've ever seen in your life. Uh, it's highly customizable. This, you can basically think of as scaffolding or a shell in which you build your own game engine. You can do all kinds of things on here. You can actually even extend this engine into a tool work yourself and make all kinds of applications on this. You can think of this as a game engine building block. Now, one of the big reasons why we are actually paying attention to the machinery is there is good pedigree behind this one. The people who made this engine made two previous engines in the past. The first one was, uh, I think, BitSquid, uh, and then it was... Uh, let me try and think of how this became. It became the Stingray engine when Autodesk bought them. So that's it. BitSquid went on to become Stingray. Now that engine has been used in a number of professional titles, including the Magicka games, uh, Warhammer Vermintide, and more. It was always a very lightweight, uh, C-oriented, data-based game engine, and the machinery is no different. This is basically a very lightweight, C-driven game engine. If the idea of working with a very modular engine and using the C language appeals to you, uh, then this may be a great engine for you. There's also um, these uh, display graphs here as another option here. This one's for setting up uh, the shaders that are available. I believe you can also use this as a bit of a programming language as well. So there is no visible op visual option available out there. But what you'll find is this entire engine is very, uh, very modular in nature. Everything you're seeing in front of you is basically implemented as a plugin of some sort. At the same time, entities in your scene can be composed of components. You can also create your own components to extend the engine that way, or you can just drive the whole thing with C behind the scenes. So for this particular example, we have uh, this guy right here. I can go ahead and run it. You'll see a very simple, straightforward example. Uh, we got mouse look camera controls. We can walk around in the scene. All right, in theory. All right, so there we go. So we can walk around in the scene, shift to do run. You can jump and so on. But in terms of what's actually controlling that, uh, that is behind the scenes in this case. So we're going to go ahead on over to Visual Studio Code. And you're going to see this particular example, which by the way, you can download. Um, I'll show you how in just a second. It's straight C code. So if you like old school C, and I'm not saying C++, I am saying C, uh, here's, you can see the code that is actually controlling that guy. So come down here, there is your uh, tick function. That's the basically uh, every pass through the game loop. This code is uh, red and you see it's pretty straightforward, you know, reading the input, handling the input and so on. So everything here, this is kind of how you could drive your game. So if you were looking kind of a throwback to the way things used to be, our machinery might be ideal for you. At the same time, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, everything here, everything you see in the engine itself, all of these tools, all these stuff, all these tabs, everything you see here, you can create your own and extend it accordingly. So so that is a quick overview of the machinery. By the way, everything here is uh, kind of nested entities. So you see here, this world itself is a test scene. And we go down here and take a look at the core of it, core of the project, we will see test scene.entity. Now this guy right here, Xbot, right there as an instance. So this test scene is composed of these various different pieces, including uh, this graph, uh, then we've got this bot. There's another bot hidden somewhere. There's a sky dome and so on. Xbot itself, we go down here and look under bot. You're going to see Xbot is another entity. So we could open up Xbot. There you see this entity in turn is built up of these different things, a transform component, physics mover component, entity rigor, another graph, for example, a camera pivot for targeting, uh, and some meshes, etc. Then we've got other tooling available as well. So for example, uh, the, uh, animation state machine right there. We can go ahead and open that guy up. And then you can see we have a state machine for controlling animations. So there is the idle animation. There is the death animation. Uh, idle, death. 
There you go. So you've got all of these tools that are there. They're just not immediately jumping out at you. Uh, but you've got, again, you've got bindings. So there's the WASD keys binding to the actual animations that we we're using. And then those bindings were in turn adapted over here in the code. Although there is a bit of a, a grid thing going on here. So somewhere, if I look down here, yeah. So you see here, binding back to the animation state machine the API that you define on the one end, there's the WASD keys being bound. I hate this part. I, I really hope they come up with a kind of a cleaner way of defining that. But you see very clean modular engine and that is that. So that's a quick interview or a quick uh, preview of our machinery or the machinery. Uh, so now that we've got that covered, let's go on back and learn a little bit about it. So you can see if you want to check this guy out, you can get to it at ourmachinery.com. As I mentioned earlier on, it is now available in open beta. The cool thing is now you come in and hit the download beta, you will find it is available for Windows and now Linux in pre-release. Uh, there are some requirements here, by the way, including Vulkan 1.2 drivers, which I did not have, and I last updated my drivers about three months ago. So you're gonna want to install new drivers before you get into this. Uh, for the Linux runtime, there are some additional downloads you've got to make as well. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it is now available for Linux, again, in pre-release. So what are the features of uh, the machinery? First off, it is a toolbox of building blocks. Uh, it's completely plug-in based, as we mentioned multiple times. A uh, powerful editing model uh, uses data model to represent editable asset or edited assets model has built-in support for serialization, streaming, copy, paste, day, drag and drop, as well as unlimited undo, redo. It supports advanced hierarchical prefab model. We kind of saw that in action earlier on. Multiple people can work together on the same game project, Google Docs style, which is also pretty cool. So you can have multiple people connected to the same project at the same time. Uh, a set of easy to build tools. Everything is built on top of the IM GUI framework. Uh, using drawing primitives, it's easy to create custom UI components, modern rendering architecture, uh, APIs like Vulkan, DX12, and Metal 2. Uh, it's high performance, it's simple, all of the code is written in plain C, a simplified shader language uh, is provided as well. Entire code base uh, compiles in less than a minute, and they support hot reloading of DLLs. Their APIs are exposed as uh, C, um, meaning that they can easily be used from C, C++, D, or any other languages that has uh, functions exposed. Uh, and then it's not just for games. You can use the whole thing to create any kind of application you want built right on top of it. So that is a bit of a rundown of their key features. Uh, again, you can go ahead and download it. And then we're talking today about this particular release. Now, there's not a whole lot exciting here other than the Linux support. We also have bindless GPU resource management and an early preview of ray tracing support, as well as asset labels for tagging assets for better organization. So those are the big things in the January 2021 release. The biggest reason why I discussed this one is because I know in previous videos, there were a lot of people out there that said, what about Linux? What about Linux? Well, this is what about Linux. Linux is now available uh, in early preview support. So we also have ray tracing, which by the way, you may find a little underwhelming. Now I told you earlier on that there's, let me just get rid of that window. Uh, there is uh, the ability to download the samples. If you want to go ahead and check out the samples, they're actually available up here. So go uh, tab samples. Oh no, those are not it. So what you want to do is, uh, yeah, I always forget where this is. In the help menu, it's like so. Just go ahead and say download the sample projects. You can pick which ones you want to go ahead and download. You can grab them one by one. You can also get different versions of the machinery binaries here as well. Just go ahead and pick them. I did the whole 200 megabyte archive. And now let's go look at the exciting ray tracing demo. This is going to blow your minds, folks. So let's go up here to file, open recent ray tracing. There we go. So yeah, we won't save our changes. There we go. So there is a ray trace triangle. Exciting stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's not a ton to it. If you want to actually dig into the source code for these things, what you want to do, of course, everything is in either downloads or temps on my machine, is locate the samples wherever you downloaded them to. So in this case, sample project 2021.1. And you'll notice all the various different sample files are available here. What you want to do is go into plugins. And then for example, the ray tracing one, we'll just go in here, ray tracing, hello triangle. And then you will see here, it's pretty straightforward. What you want to do is go ahead and uh, open up ray tracing test.c. And that one is, this is the example for rendering a ray trace triangle. Now it's gonna look like a lot of code uh, to get just a ray trace triangle on screen at 330. But when you compare that to Vulkan's 1100 lines of code, 
uh, it's better. So it's a very early support for ray tracing. It literally just draws this triangle up on screen. But if you want to jump in and check out the code, that is where it is available. Uh, also, if you want to go ahead and start creating your own plugins, you can do so directly from inside here, create a new plugin, and you can create various different types. So we could create an entity component. We saw that earlier on in the component section over there for extending things component-based. Editor tabs for extending the editor itself. Uh, simulate entity or a minimal entity. So if you want to extend things, all that tooling and functionality is built in here. Um, so yeah, that is the machinery. The big thing here in this new particular release is of course, Linux support. And as you can see, super exciting ray trace triangles. So let me know what you think of the machinery in general. It's a very different engine for a very different kind of person. So if you're not down with the whole extensibility, the simplicity of C and data driven, it's probably not the engine for you. But if those are the things you are looking for, this is kind of a unique entity in the closest thing I would say that existed to this guy was the BitSquid engine which kind of makes sense because they were created by the same people, uh, but nothing since. So since uh, Autodesk killed off Stingray, uh, there's been a hole in the market for something like this. So if you're looking for, again, a, a scaffolding to build your game out of, uh, the machinery may be a good pick for you. So anyways, that is it. Still in early beta. Uh, the Linux support now in release in pre-release format. So don't expect it to be perfect as of yet. But if you're looking for this kind of a game engine, well, it's a one of a kind and it now supports Linux. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.